Listen, we just had July 4th in our rearview mirror, and obviously everybody knows that date and the significance as it relates to America. But I'm going to give you another one, at least as it relates to American politics. January 21st, 2010. And trust me, it's a blip on the radar for most here. But if you want to know when politics really, really changed, possibly forever, that's the day. It was when the Supreme Court issued its ruling on campaign finance, better known as Citizens United. Now, ever since, we've been sounding the alarm, and basically people have shrugged and said, yeah, I don't believe it, I haven't seen it, about how the changes that come along with that ruling will change politics and campaigns as we've known it. Now, political donations, anonymous political donations, Basically, the floodgates open, and today we got an even more clear picture of how that ruling has changed the political landscape. And Andrew, this is going to be the first real election on a large scale that we're going to feel it and see it. And on every possible scale, Rich, from the presidential election all the way down to the race for dog catcher. Thanks to some reporting by the New York Times, we now know that corporations, thanks to Citizens United, have aired or paid for $100 million in issue ads so far this year. Ads that, while never saying vote for this person, are clearly designed to work that way. That's a $100 million total paid for two out of every three political ads to air so far this year. And as I mentioned, it's not just the race for the White House where they're spending. The Times reports the corporate-backed issue ads have popped up in race after race and on all levels all the way down to even a redistricting fight in Minnesota. And well-known companies are spending big and hiding the receipts and hoping the customers will not notice, like the million spent by utility company American Electric Power for Republican candidates, or the three million going to the GOP groups from Aetna Insurance, or the 50 million to be spent by the Republican-supporting Chamber of Commerce, thanks to businesses like Prudential, Dow Chemical, and Merck Pharmaceuticals, and that's just the drop in the bucket. But there are efforts to try to stop that trend, or at least short of that, to shed some more light on the shadowy process of corporate donations. The Disclose Act would add more disclosure to all corporate political spending and would block government contractors from giving at all. But the Disclose Act is all but dead in the U.S. Senate. It has zero Republican support. And in an op-ed in USA Today Thursday, Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell explained why. McConnell calls the bill, quote, a serious attempt to limit freedom of speech. I should point out we're talking about corporate freedom of speech. How? Because in McConnell's mind, if voters know who, uh, I'm sorry, know what and who corporations are spending on, they might get upset. If that happens, McConnell thinks the information would be used to identify and punish political enemies, corporate political enemies, and even compared such pressure to Richard Nixon's enemies list. But that explanation rang hollow to the New York Times. In a Saturday editorial, Times editors wrote what they suspect the real motivation for Mr. McConnell is, protecting corporate interests. Quote, Corporations love the secrecy provided by Mr. Rove's group, among others, because it protects them from scrutiny by nosy shareholders and consumers. They want a big influence on elections, but without leaving any tracks. And again, Rich, $100 million, two out of every three issue ads that we've seen so far this year, all thanks to corporations and in many cases, anonymous corporate donations. You know, I, I saw the same piece, Andrew, and they mentioned Aetna, the insurance giant. The CEO of Aetna came out in support of uh, Obama's health care rule. Mm -hmm. So if I'm a shareholder, let alone somebody, a consumer who's picking my insurer that I'm going to go with, regardless of my politics, at least I know where the company stands, or so I think. But while he's doing that, they're writing a $3 million check. We're none the wiser here because they're going to funnel through some super PAC, and we don't even know. If we write checks, we show up in the FEC report as to who we're giving money to. Mm -hmm. How dare a company have more, with a lot more leverage than I ever have, because I have a cap on what I can give, how dare a company have the right to be able to secretly give money? And if I'm a shareholder, I don't know where my money's going. And secondly, if I'm a consumer, I don't know what my com com company stands for. Not only that, Rich, but if you gave money to a, a political, uh, to, to an elected official. Well, my check, I'm and, right to and, it. Now, and, they might be using and, it for doing something. And somebody passed a law that benefited you, that would be illegal. But if you're a business owner and your business gives money to a politician and they pass laws that benefit your business, that's all okay. Listen, I think Citizens United stinks. I think it's going to hurt us long term. I think it races, not even for the presidential race, uh, some mining company uh, that's, you know, basically the only game in town in some West Virginia thing, they're going to buy an election because they got the money to do it. And you know what? The people, either they'll know it or they're not, but basically they'll buy up every ad time, they'll buy the candidates, and they'll be able to do it legally now. Mm -hmm. So that kind of thing to me really bothers me. But here, TJ, is the thing that drives me crazy. Yeah. Even if you think a company is, uh, um, as uh, Mr. Romney famously said, is, is an individual person with all the rights that come along with it, 
then have the guts if you're a company to say, mm -hmm. I'm writing a check for X amount of dollars, mm -hmm. and I'm going to spend it for this campaign because I believe in this issue and I'm against this candidate. At least have the guts, the courage, and the transparency to see where you're spending the money. This is gutless, yeah. it's sneaky, and for me, it's not what this system was built on. Mm -hmm. Why the heck, how do we have a fighting chance? If companies are going to be writing checks here right. for seven, eight-figure checks, and we never even know. Yeah, no, it's it's disconcerting, and uh, it is kind of a a, 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 a struggle, uh, you know, uh, ethically uh, on the part of people who are all about free speech and and, and freedom uh, of choice and all that. Uh, you know, I I think um, I think though, as long as both sides are doing it, there's there's not much of a of a, of a moral issue here. Uh, I think the president had an opportunity to really pl uh, uh, walk the walk at, while he talked the talk. He you know, at one moment he's standing in the, on the floor of the, the House of Representatives, uh, publicly chiding the, the, the Supreme Court justices in front of the whole wide world, wagging his finger literally at them. And then a year and a half later, he is there embracing the notion and accepting the money really, from a super. But it's not really pack. even on both sides. I mean, you're talking about you know, corporate donations are heavily leaning towards the Republican Party. But you in, know what, Andrew, just for our time purposes, but, but, you're right. But to me, a pox on both houses. Okay, sure. so let me Absolutely. just do it. But where is the Republican? A one Republican says, yeah. You got to say if you write a check who yeah. you are. I'd like to, to see that. that drives me nuts, Dominic. And yeah. I and you've been covering campaigns forever. For people who think, well, you know what, it all comes out in the wash at the end, it's all fine. Can you just explain here? Money's tight here. And a company that can write a check for this <laughs> size, the influence they'll have with that campaign, with that candidate, and that committee that that person, if he or she ever gets elected, can you talk about the influence that kind of power now can have? Richard, it is almost borderline corruption. There is no other way except for the Supreme Court made it legal. And most of these super PAC donations, as Andrew pointed out, are leaning Republican. What it means is plain and simple. If you give, let's say, anonymously under super PAC rules, $10 million to my campaign, $10 million, and you don't give my opponent anything, when you call and you want bills that are against the consumer but good for your business, what do you think I'm going to advocate? Well, I, yeah. I, think, I think we already know what happens, Don, because, Andrew, you covered it this year with Alec. You have a group with the Koch brothers, okay? And I know this might sound like uh, Newsnight or whatever the show is that uh, the Sorkin show, which is, eh, okay. Um, but anyway, <laughs> but it's true if you watched it. It wasn't just clever writing. They literally write the bills with a check, and they'll send it to an office. The lawmaker, I don't even know if he reads it, but he or she submits it directly, pre-written for them by a group that's advocating corporate interests, and they put it on the floor of the state legislatures. Mm -hmm. If that doesn't scare the American public, I don't know what can. And again, this isn't some ivory tower debate. I don't care about Republican or Democrat here. This is going on. I think we all talked about it, but I think it went in one ear and out the other. I think they're going to see it in November, and I got a feeling, Andrew, all of a sudden in December or whatever, they're going to say, wait a second, what just happened here? Uh, nobody told me about that. It's happening, and it's happening right now. You know, it, it's funny. A lot, they were called alarmists by a lot of people, but the Occupy Wall Street group, you would talk to them and they'd be like, we don't trust either party. We think there's too much. Their big fear was a corporate takeover of the U.S. government. This really is a tool to allow that. I mean, it, you and get that much corporate revenue. money. How dare Mitch McConnell play into fear out there that, that this is somehow an assault on freedoms of America and that the government enemies list is out to get somebody? Like, the Koch brothers are living in abject quaking fear here because the government's going to go get them? He's going to filibuster this Disclose Act, and he needed to establish why. No, but that's and now, outrageous, and, and it's dangerous well, what he, he said, Well, he had to say too. something. He but had to say what? something. You can't go down that road. They're the already going after operatives, though. You donate a big chunk of money uh, as much as you can. They, who was, I don't know, there was some fella out, out in the, one of the hey, mountain teacher, states. how the hell do I know it, who it is? It, no, you I'm talking, I'm talking about people that had been disclosed. I'm talking about, not talking about people that are contributing to PACs. I'm talking about people that are out there. No, yeah, we'll talk about yeah, Soros. Yeah, no, no, yeah, no. There's yeah, a conservative yeah, guy. Yeah. He's out there in one of the mountain states. I don't know if it was Utah or Colorado, and he donated. And next thing you know, they're talking about his divorce in the papers, and they're talking. They go after these people who are out there, and 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 that's on the regular maximum uh, uh, level. 